Once upon a time, there was a lady, and she lived by herself. She always wanted a daughter, since she was a little girl herself. One bright morning, she was watering the plants and crying, thinking if she had a little girl with whom she could play with. A fairy godmother appeared in front of her. What happened, my child? Why are you crying? I have set my heart upon having a little girl. Please, could you tell me where I can find one? I'm helpless. Oh, don't worry. That can be easily managed. Fairy Godmother, with her magical powers, brought forward a seed in front of her. My child, you see, this is not an ordinary seed that grows in farms. This seed needs lots of love and warmth. Put it into a flower pot and see what will happen. And don't forget to give it enough sunlight. Oh, thank you, Godmother. You are so generous. She planted the seed in the pot. She kept the pot in front of the window for enough sunlight. It quickly grew into a fine, large flower, which looked very much like a tulip. The woman nourished it with love and watered it each day. One day, she softly kissed its half-shut petals. And as though by magic, the flower opened in full blossom. Inside sat a very delicate and graceful little maiden girl. She's my child, my daughter. I'll call her Thumbelina. She's not bigger than the size of my thumb. I'm your mother, child, and your name is Thumbelina. The flower had given her the daughter that she had dreamed of. She had a walnut shell that served as her cradle, violet petals for her mattress, and she pulled up a rose petal as her blanket. During the day, she played in a tulip petal boat, floating on a plate of water, and rowed herself from side to side with two oars made of white horsehair. It really was a very pretty sight. One night, she lay fast asleep in her walnut shell. A large frog hopped through a hole in the window pane. How pretty she is. She'd make the perfect bride for my own dear son. And she took up the walnut shell in which little Tiny lay asleep and put Thumbelina on a water lily leaf in the middle of the pond. We have placed her on a lily leaf. She will never be able to escape us now. <coughs> Left all alone on the green leaf, Thumbelina sat down and cried she didn't want to have the frog's horrible son for her husband. No way I am marrying you! You can't say that to me! On the other hand, Mother tried to find Thumbelina in every corner of the house, but she couldn't find her. There was a shoal of fishes who swam in the water beneath her. They had seen the frog and heard their conversation. They felt very sorry, so they decided to help her. Meanwhile, the frog and her son were busy making the wedding plans. The fishes gathered around the green stem and nibbled it with their teeth. The leaf separated from the stem, and Thumbelina started floating. Thank you so much. You guys are really kind. Thumbelina went away. Far, far away, where the frogs could not find her. Thumbelina sailed past many a place, where the little birds saw her and they sang, What a pretty girl! As darkness grew, 
she wrapped herself with the leaf and slept. But the next morning, she woke up at a place where the sun struck the water and it looked like shining gold. She was heading towards the end of the stream. Just then, a big bug flew by. What a beautiful girl she is! I must save her! Immediately, he fastened his claws around her and took her away to a far, far place. Where are you taking me, Mr. Bug? I'm taking you to my house. After a while, when they reached the bug's house, all the other bugs who lived in the tree came to see who had come. Friends, look at this pretty girl. I am going to marry her. She has only two legs. What a miserable sight this is. Look at that. She has two hands. How shameful. She looks like a human being. How ugly she is. Mr. Bug came to agree with them and finally, in anger, left her somewhere deep in the woods. The winters approached. Snow began to fall and the poor girl shivered with cold. It was terribly cold for her. She walked and walked, finding food and shelter. No sooner did she come across a little cottage. She went to the huge door of the cottage and knocked. Out came a field mouse who lived in the cottage. Who are you, poor little thing? Ah, I'm lost in the woods. I'm feeling very cold and have nothing to eat. Could you help me? I live alone here. You can come into my house and share my dinner. You will feel warm here. But before that, may I know your name? I am Thumbelina. Thumbelina came inside. The cottage was warm and cozy, with a whole storeroom of grain and a kitchen with a pantry. Thank you for sharing food and giving me a warm place to stay. You can stay with me all winter. Mrs. Mouse, you are really kind. The mouse was so fascinated by Thumbelina's beauty that she wanted her to stay with her forever. It's a weekend, so we shall have a visitor today. Once every week, my neighbor comes to see me. Soon the bell rang, and there appeared a mole. He paid them a visit in his black velvet coat. The mole heard her voice and fell in love with her sweet voice. He decided to marry her, so he went to the mouse and said, I shall give you all my food and my house, only if you get me married to this pretty girl. Mrs. Mouse couldn't say no to the rich mole. All right, I shall start the preparations then. Yes. Thumbelina didn't want to marry the mole. So the next morning, she decided to run away. While wandering in the woods, she came upon an injured sparrow lying in the forest. The poor bird must certainly have died of the cold. As she went closer, she saw the sparrow was alive. He was just injured. Are you okay, dear sparrow? Oh no, it's bleeding. Thumbelina decided to help the little bird and got some bandages and medicine for the sparrow. Don't worry, Mrs. Sparrow. You will be all right now. The little sparrow could fly just as she applied bandages. Goodbye, you pretty little bird. Thank you, pretty little child. I shall never forget this. What help can I be of to you? Soon, she saw the mouse and the mole approaching and calling out her name. Oh, Thumbelina, where are you? As Thumbelina heard their voice, she told the sparrow, The mouse wants me to get married to Mr. Mole. Please, could you take me away somewhere far from them? I don't want to marry the mole. I have a 
plan. Come on, climb on my back, quickly. Bye, Mrs. Mouse. Thank you for everything. I love you, and I shall never forget this. The mole and mouse were startled as they saw Thumbelina flying away. The sparrow took her to a flower land, where there were all types of flowers and little birds who would sing. This is just so beautiful. What's it called? It's called the flower land, and it's time I leave. Thank you, Miss Sparrow. You are the best. Thumbelina was very happy. This is my home. These flowers smell so good. The birds sing so softly. No sooner did she remember her real home, how her mother grew her up with her love. She felt very sad and wanted to go home now. But suddenly, there appeared the king of Flowerland. He saw Thumbelina and fell in love with her. I am the king of Flowerland. And you are the prettiest girl I've ever seen. Will you marry me and be my wife? I will make you the queen of Flowerland. Thumbelina thought for a minute. Here indeed was a different sort of husband from the froggy son, Mr. Bug, and the mole with his black velvet coat. Yes, only if you take me back to my mother, and we three will live happily there. He agreed. And brought Thumbelina a present. The best gift of all was a pair of wings that had belonged to a large silver fly. When these were made fast to her back, she too could fly from flower to flower. After the marriage, the king and Thumbelina flew away and found the mother's home. The mother. Was really happy to see her back. Oh, Thumbelina, you don't know how happy I am to get you back. I will never let you go away from me now. I will never leave you, Mother. Mother welcomed both of them, and they lived happily ever after.